Welcome to Kirsty and Brandy's Comfort Zone. We have we have a special secret today. Well, we it's do. not going to be a secret for very long, but this is episode fifty today. Mm-hmm. So we thought we would get someone extra special. Extra, extra special. Extra special. So we have the amazing animator Adam Phillips joining us today. Welcome, Adam. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, hey, uh, was the was the 50 uh, in any way... Uh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. I was going to say something about my... I was going to say something about my age, but uh, yeah. <laughs> what, a, what a special you know what? day. Funny you what should a special say number. That. I was thinking last night whilst I was sat with my little foster hamster and I was talking to her about how how should I do the introduction tomorrow because she's very insightful about these things. (laughs) And I was saying, should I mention, like, I I was thinking like, oh, I shouldn't mention how long I've watched your animations for because it will make us both feel bad. (laughs) Aww. (laughs) But it's true. I remember the days of, what was it, Newgrounds and all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's... It doesn't seem like that long ago to me, honestly, but for 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 most people it's like a lifetime away. It's like <laughs> everyone was kids when, when that stuff came out, but I was an old man already. I still uh, me and my friends still reference the like 30, 30 shorts in thirty days. Oh yeah. Um, Which one was your favorite? Like, oh shut up. <laughs> oh shut up. I still do that on and stream. And they were genuinely there were two of them that I couldn't watch because they horrified me so much. I, I know exactly the ones you're talking about. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I bet I can guess. It's the uh, the lip rip one. Yeah. And the razor toothbrush. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I watched them all once. And after that, I was like, never again. That's enough. <laughs> never again. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, there, there's... Everyone's got their favourites and their and their most um, cringe-inducing ones, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think my other favourite, other than the "Oh Shut Up," was the uh, what was it called? Snart. Yeah. <laughs> the guy on the stage that's like, "I hope you all have a wonderful evening tonight." Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Turns around, <laughs> honk. Yeah. Yeah, I did all the sound effects for those. Um, with my face like this pretty much even the like car tires screaming and stuff is just me screaming and that's one thing people people ask is like where did you did you do all the sound effects for these and it's like it's <laughs> yeah. just it's everything was so um cobbled together in a day because I would I would come up with those ideas as I was drifting off to sleep because it was a one every day for 30 days and in fact I was going to do um that was my going to be my I'd planned that to be my new career is to make a short every day for the rest of my mm-hmm. life. And then somebody um, said to me, oh, you should just do do it for a month. And I said, okay, I'll do it for a month. Uh, he, he said you should announce it as a monthly thing rather – as a one-month thing rather than a forever thing. Yeah. And I thought, oh, well, that's probably a good idea. So so I announced it as a one-month thing. And, man, by the – by. 20 days I had no ideas left (laughs) I was like I'm really glad that guy (laughs) talked me out of doing it for the rest of my life because that towards the end they got really uh, I don't know just kind of like scraping the bottom of my comedy barrel (laughs) I can imagine oh my gosh it's like we have a friend we have a friend who makes animations for TikTok and I think he does like one a week and I'm like how do you keep coming up with these like how is he? But they're always really good as well. He just mm. keeps on um, knocking it out of the park. But yeah, it's a it's an amazing. And how long are they? God, they're they a co- couple be. of minutes at least, right? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. A couple of minutes of animation a week. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, I can't remember the sort of he does like is it rotoscoping? Maybe I think he yeah, sometimes does right. with like. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of like face acting going over stuff. But I don't know if he does it for those. He's. He just, it, it was like um, when lockdown hit, I think he just always wanted to do animation and finally had time to do it and threw himself into it a bit. Is that that software, that software called um, EBSynth or EBSynth? Is that it? Do you, you know what the software I'm talking about? Mm. No, no, I I'm don't not sure. Because there, there's a guy on YouTube who like blew up big time. He was doing these kind of like um, uh, kind of gaming 
NPC conversations, like from I forget what the game was at Skype. Oh, like the Stardew Valley one. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen that one. I don't know if that is might be the same guy, but he's an, I think he's American or Canadian. He's um, he's got a little must <laughs> little mustache like the <laughs> uh, the higher in in real life, but he uses. Um, it basically, it's the software that rotoscopes video, so it turns it into a 2D. Um, I think it puts keyframes every however many frames you specify keyframes to be. So it'll it'll capture a frame and vectorize it, so it puts an outline around it and cartoonifies it, and then eight frames later, it'll do it again, and then it'll try to. At least I think this is how it works, and then it um, it tries to interpolate between those two frames, so you get this kind of you're not actually drawing to do the animation is the yeah. thing. It's a um, oh. kind of algor- algorithmic or something. I think I've seen the ones you've... Well, there's a... If not, there's a guy who's very similar who does things about Stardew Valley. And it's always like... Because some of the character behavior, it makes sense in game. But if you actually think about it, it doesn't. Like the fact that um, there's this one character who will just send you like a pint of beer in the post randomly. <laughs> and you're thinking, how does this actually work? It's just... About those sorts of quirks of um of the NPCs, but yeah, yeah, right. That's that sort of style. Did you ever see the one um, uh, Skyrim where the guy? It's like reenacting an NPC in Skyrim. Yes. Um, yeah, and he swims across the pool, and then <laughs> it's like doing that death grunt as he's he's swimming and dying across the pool, and he's going <laughs> ah ah ah, and then he just like immediately rolls onto his back and is dead. <laughs> like he just does it so, it does it so perfectly. It just looks exactly like the um apart from the surroundings, it looks exactly like the NPC yeah. acting. Mm-hmm. It's so mm-hmm. good. I saw one the other day that was like someone uh they like walk into the kitchen and someone is pretending to like chop this carrot in the NPC way and then they nudge them and she just carries on doing the chopping motion but just onto nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, those videos are so oh. good. <laughs> yeah, they're so good. That um, that e- e- synth or you know that cartoonifying one that I was just talking about. Um, it just captures the. Uh, it's so hokey and it's so bad looking that that's why yes. it's hilarious and entertaining. Yeah. But I guess there's a certain <laughs> appeal to low effort <laughs> stuff, which puts me out of um out of reach of anything going viral. <laughs> <laughs> you just do something low effort and then you, you hit the big time. Yeah, people love janky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jank. Um, have you ever had an animation that, or an idea for animation that has been influenced by your dreams? Yeah, that's something I wanted to ask. Um, do you, so you know the UU, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's the, uh, those, um, shadow creatures that are chasing my main character, Bitey, across the across the world, pretty much. Um, when I was a kid, I used to hear um, the Yu Yu coming for me. Oh my god! And it, like in real life, and I would be lying in bed. Um, Mum or Dad would turn off the light and go up the hallway to their room, and then I'd hear Yu 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 Yu. Oh my Yu-yu. god! That's Jeez. terrifying. <laughs> and I would be looking at the window across the floor. And I, I still remember so vividly, and I love Moonlight for this, you know, all my life because of, you know, the, the moonlight coming through my bedroom window back in, when I was a little kid. Just, yeah. yeah, I guess it affected me so much that it just gave me this lifelong kind of love of moonlight. And that's why the moon is all through my work as well. But um, I, was, I would lie, I'd be lying in bed hearing the yu-yu coming and I could swear I could see them in the shadows in, of the corners of the room um, trying not to step into the moonlight and going along the edges of the walls and they're coming towards me. And um, I didn't figure it out until I was much older, like 40, <laughs> <laughs> that it was my heartbeat. And oh, oh my God. And that sound, that if I had a normal heartbeat, it would have been but I've had a I had a heart murmur all my life, and instead of going doof doof, it was whoosh whoosh. So my heart was going 
Wow, that's so interesting. And that's where the the UU came from. That's why I called them that, and that's why you know through that through those movies they have that chant that's going you 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 you. Yeah, and it's really um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. I just wanted to put that. Um, so it's not quite a dream, but it's something that really um, affected me as a kid and stayed with me into when I was making animation. Um, but as far as um, dreams, I'm trying to think of something that really was. Yeah, well, I mean, all through my through my entire life as a kid, I had this fascination with um, European style forests because you know I grew up in uh, a dry kind of on the driest continent on earth yeah. <laughs> and it's like um, <laughs> the, the kind of area where I grew up was very dusty and dry and well you got your seasons and your rivers and waterfalls and waterways and stuff but um, we didn't really have those big tall thick forests that I used to read about in Lord of the Rings and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's where Brackenwood came from is just my fascination with really heavy dense um greenery that we didn't really have when I was a kid. I guess I've never really thought about that because, like, I guess because of watching Lord of the Rings growing up, like, I sort of think, like, oh, my gosh, New Zealand over that way is, like, yeah, amazing. And then I, I never really put the two together that it would be two such different... I think because of, like, growing up in the UK, we forget how tiny we are, so the scale of other places just the fact that there can be two such different landscapes so close to each other in new zealand and australia i'm just like oh yeah yeah that's true actually <laughs> they are very different yeah <laughs> well when i uh like the the new zealand landscape is it seems pretty much like the uk right it's very yeah. similar don't you think yeah. yeah and it's got like mountains and it's got cold um we're down near the other pole but it's it's very cold down there and Australia has a huge kind of range of different climates and um and terrain and stuff so we've also got mountains and uh, but we don't have that well we do have the snow peaked mountains um that's south of here um and we also have really dense heavy rainforest but when i was a kid i didn't see any of that you know like um like you're talking about it being as the uk being a small country and new zealand's about a similar size because you can drive from one side of your country to the other yeah. in a few hours. Yeah. And for here you can drive for eight days and not run into it. <laughs> That's <laughs> you know, insane. Yeah, yeah. And I drove to my um, – I drove up to Queensland a uh, couple of months ago and I had to do the drive because um, I, I was taking my dad up to Queensland and, and back and I had to go and pick him up. And the drive was 13 hours um, each way. And on the way back, I, I did the whole 17-hour trip oh um, in one in one run. Oh, my so God. Without, <laughs> and so that was like how many times can you crisscross New Zealand in, what was that, about 20, 27 hours of driving I did? Um, but, yeah, it's such a huge country and I that's not even covering half of yeah. it. It's not mm-hmm. even driving across half of it. But yeah, we've got so much um, varied terrain. A lot of people think that Australia is kind of um, uh, just barren and desert, but we've got everything here. We've got snow and ice and rainforests and tropics and arid desert stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I think people often forget how big Australia actually is. Yeah. yeah. Especially if they've never been there before. Like you don't sort of register the fact that it's so huge. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's is it like I don't know if it's bigger than North America or the same size or smaller, but it's kind of like America. Like it's got every, every different type of. Um, although we don't really have the canyons and things that America does, uh, and and the canyons that we do have are all f- full of forests. Like where mm-hmm. I live is just like this national park that's just all forested and beautiful green. Like looking down on it, it looks like a big green blanket. Yeah. From the lookouts and stuff, or in in my village where I live, um, but going down in amongst it, like um, British backpackers go missing down oh, there all the time because God. it's so vast, <laughs> and they think, oh yeah, I'm I did an SAS course or I did a boot camp, so they go off 
by themselves with one guy went off with uh, three pizzas in his belly thinking that he'll be <laughs> fine and nobody saw him for three oh weeks and there oh were helicopters God. out there <laughs> and eventually they dragged him out um, and he was he's, he lived but people go missing down there all the time or they um, or they are found too late. It's just like so dangerous yeah. to go out by yourself in those areas. Yeah, this is the thing about Australia. It's like I've always had this picture of like, um, like in a in something like Skyrim, like the UK is the starting zone where there's no monsters and you're absolutely fine. And then the big boss <laughs> at the end is Australia. Like every like you just feel like everything's <laughs> trying to kill you. The spiders are as big yeah. as your head. <laughs> like I just, I'm not ready for yeah. that. <laughs> I'm still in the baby zone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying in the UK. <laughs> or can I go to New Zealand yeah. yet? <laughs> it's like the other day I said um, to my Australian friend, I was like, oh, there's a, a really big spider in the house. And he was like, oh, what, like a huntsman? And I was like, no, like a tiny baby spider. Oh. <laughs> but it's big to me. <laughs> How big's a big spider to you? Like an inch. <laughs> Pound coin. <laughs> it's huge. Well, I could show you a photograph of a, of a spider I saw on the wall on my way to bed oh, one geez. night, but um, oh you God. probably wouldn't want to see it. And I, it was it's so big that I put, I put a ruler up to take oh the photo. Gosh. <laughs> I oh, put my a, God. Yeah. I just, great. can you ever relax? <laughs> Yeah. Well, they're the friendliest things, though. They're not Aww. friendly, as in they they won't come up and give you a hug or anything. But they they can just get around the walls and the room and um, and take care of bugs yeah. and mosquitoes or moths or whatever. And you know, they're just bros. They just hang out, they're just and, minding their own business. Yeah. Although, though, most of the the biggest ones are all the ladies. Oh, yeah, so true. you see them mm. um, sitting up in the corner, and if they stay in the corner for more than a day and if they're up there for you know you think oh she's been there for a while and then you start to see her abdomen oh, no. over the couple of days <laughs> yeah. her abdomen gets bigger and bigger and bigger uh -oh. <laughs> and then then next day she's gone and there's just a big egg sack there in the corner <laughs> oh god <laughs> so you're like i'm gonna have to take that down now thanks for that oh, <laughs> But yeah, they're lovely. If I if I have well, we usually take them down and put them outside because one did fall on my pillow while I was asleep at <gasps> <one> night. <laughs> no, and, and I'm I'm sure most Australians can tell you a story like that who live in like regional areas, especially. Yeah. But um, yeah, huntsmen drop on you all the time. But oh my god, if they if they bite you, they kind of sting, but they don't they don't attack you and and take pleasure in it or anything <laughs> like that. They just they, they just want to get away. But yeah. we when you take them down off the off the walls or whatever, um, we've got a special system where I have this telescoping um, walking pole and I've got a an attachment where I glued uh, hot glued a, a container to it so that I can because we've got pretty high ceilings in this house and I can reach up and put the the container with the walking pole oh. over the spider. Because they're really they they run oh, they they put they flare yeah. their arms up if you come near them they they're like mm -hmm. back off and they throw their arms up <laughs> like I don't know if you remember that um, logo of mine at the end of my movies where the spider would throw his yeah. arms up yeah mm -hmm. yeah and used to freak people out and they didn't want to click <laughs> it but um, <laughs> that was inspired by yeah Huntsman here but. Um, yeah, you take them down and I, I, I always put them outside, but I always make sure there's no birds around because the birds will eat them happily. Do you also get bird eating spiders over there or is that elsewhere? Um, oh, I've never seen one, but yeah, they've got a, they've what, what's called a mouse spider. Um, and it, it's not, doesn't look like a mouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> put it that way. Oh, it gee, eats mice. God. But, um, yeah, it's. Uh, but I think that's they've got those in South America as well and parts of Asia. I think you've got some really, uh, really big giant spiders and tarantulas are from like Southeast Asia, I think, or or is that South America? I've just had a little Google and the Goliath oh, okay. bird eater is from South America. Right, right. It looks more like a tar tarantula. <laughs> it's just huge. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that wrapping its arms around you. <laughs> oh, God. Holding you down. 
<laughs> I feel like when bugs get like really big, they feel a little bit easier to handle, though. Personally, I, I don't know. I've never held a tarantula or a big spider or anything, but I feel like it would be better than a tiny one that yeah. can sort of get everywhere and run yeah. away quickly. You know, it's like the other day I was saying that it would be easier to try and wrestle one big dinosaur than fight lots of little ones. Maybe it's the same as that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's the same, same as spiders. Same thing. Although, when you think about it. Would you rather wrestle a big giant spider or would you rather fight off lots of little ones? I think, I think a giant I one. I think a giant one. Yeah. <laughs> you really? You have so you haven't yeah. seen you haven't seen arachnophobia then? I saw that when I was a child and I still to this day, like oh my God. thirty years on or whatever, <laughs> I still have to tap my shoes to check there's no spiders in there. We don't even really get any spiders oh that would God. hurt you in this country, but I still have to check my shoes mm. every day. <laughs> <laughs> what spiders do you have there? Because, like, if they're all small and they're all... Are there any venomous ones? I don't think there's any spiders that would hurt you. We get the... What are they? The fake widows or something? Yeah, we have false widows. False um, widows, that's the one. Specifically named to prove they can't hurt you. And yet yeah, still we fear. <laughs> I, I, the first day that I moved into my halls at university, I looked at the window and it was a bit gross a bit, little bit grotty and I, I looked at the very top and there was just a false widow just chilling there i was like great great this is this is how it's gonna be oh, cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah well we've got the, the well as the the spiders and the insects and the that kind of wildlife but we've got so much other um wildlife that kind of like it's part of that ecosystem so that if you've got a lot of spiders then it'll attract birds and if you've got a lot of birds then um you got a problem <laughs> but the the the, in, the spiders take care of the the insects and then the um, birds take care of the spiders we'll be yeah. sitting in the in our dining room and you can see out into the backyard and there'll be a bird that will fly up and just kind of hover at the edge of the wall and then fly away again and it's just collecting a spider from the from the wall it's just really nice that they've got that, you know, they know where to get spiders because they all live under the eaves or in the cracks of walls and stuff. And so, mm -hmm. we, yeah, attracting wildlife with, um, with insects. I was growing, um, I'm, I'm still growing mealworms so that I can feed them to the birds, but the birds don't like them, so I don't know what to do with them now. I've got a Aww. big mealworm <laughs> farm. <laughs> Maybe the spiders will like them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got to let them hatch into beetles because, well, that I've got a, well, there's a whole system to it. But you, my mother gave me the beetles, and then the beetles lay the eggs, and then the eggs become the mealworms, and then you feed the mealworms to your birds or your chickens if you've got chickens or birds or lizards or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then some of them, you don't want to throw all your mealworms to the birds and some of them will pupate and turn into beetles and then you put them into the beetle tray. So that, that's just this cycle. And so I've got had this thing going where it's just growing more and more and more beetles. <laughs> and I can't, <laughs> none of the birds will eat them. So I just got this oh God. big box of beetles that I have to keep feeding apples and stuff. And <laughs> hoping, hoping there'll be, a, maybe I should get a lizard. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that is the other side of things. It's like there are the terrifying Australian things, but then you do get the amazing wildlife as well. Like, is it possums or opossums that you get? We get possums and they're marsupials. Oh. Uh, the opossums in, in the States are marsupials as well, are they? Because they've got those canines. So, they've yeah. got those big, like, yeah. teeth. But, um, yeah, did I ever show you that? I think I might have shown you that clip of a possum. I show it on my stream on the all roof. the time. Yeah, eating yeah. a pear. But we've got, like, most people want, don't want possums in their ceiling because, um, mm -hmm. you know, they wee up there and um, <laughs> they find places to get stuck and you can hear them getting stuck in the walls and trying to get out and sometimes you've got to, oh, no. you've got to, you've got to listen Aww. into the wall and say, come on, you can come this way, follow my voice. And you're trying to, <laughs> trying to coax the, <laughs> the possum up into an area that will – anyway, um, that's only happened a couple of times, but they don't get stuck for too long. They just – you can hear them trying to find places to live. Um, and we've got one resident, we call her Mabel, and she lives above the kitchen 
And when we're having breakfast in the morning, um, we hear her turning over in bed and she's like rolling around and scratching and stuff and and then she'll go oh, to sleep. And it's God. just really adorable. And she's the one, I think that's Mabel who I was feeding on that video that I show on my stream sometimes. But, um, yeah, and it's kind of nice, but you really don't want too many of those because once they live yeah. up there, they, they have babies and then the babies will move out of home. But if you've got a big enough roof, they'll just move into a different part of the roof. And so they're in a different part of the, like the, a different cavity of the, of the roof space. And so you got to have like a lot of possums up there and it'll turn into a, <laughs> you know, you can, and they make such horrible noises straight out of hell. It sounds like, um, when they fight and oh, mate God. and I yeah. put, um, I felt like, yeah. um, you know, I felt a bit dirty, but I put a um a camera up there and I saw them mating <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> they're, they're doing it. They're having kids up there. So we had to, <laughs> oh, no. had to close off some of the um some of the access points uh, in the roof so that we locked them out. But the, the surefire way to stop them getting into your roof is to put a um put a light up there and what. Because they they prefer the dark, of course, and they're nocturnal. Yeah. But if you put a bright light up in the roof space, um, they won't come in. But Mabel comes in anyway, so she's used to the light. Oh. Yeah. So it's her home, and I don't know what we'd do if we were we were thinking of getting a skylight in the kitchen. Um, but then you know that Mabel would have to move out, and I don't want Mabel to have to move out. I don't know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, Bless her. Mabel. And we used to have um, we used to have a cat, and she was very um, she was very sweet. And we brought her up from the city when we moved up here, and so she became a mountain cat in her senior years. But um, but she would never bother any of the animals, any of the like visiting birds or lizards or um, or huntsmen, our friendly huntsmen, or she wouldn't bother the possums or anything. But um, I think, you know, after she left and we thought, should we get another cat? And I thought, well, no, we've got so many pets. They're all wild, but they're all our pets. <laughs> <laughs> They've all got yeah. names. <laughs> you got yeah. all your beetles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all my beetles. They've all got yeah. names and <laughs> little T-shirts. <laughs> ah. Yeah. I had a look and the biggest spider we have in the UK is about two inches across. <laughs> two inches. <laughs> So, oh my god, we uh, that's adorable. We just have little babies, <laughs> yeah. No, and we're all terrified of them. No, <laughs> yeah, that's even more adorable. You open up like a bike shed, you see one of those in there, it's like, oh god, I can never go in but, the shed again. No, no, it's just a baby, just I burn it down. Never go. The easiest oh, way, <laughs> yep. yeah, yeah, burn it down, nuke it from leave. space. Well, that's what, um, <laughs> yeah, when, when people from post these hor horrifying pictures of. It's adorable little money spider or something on their <laughs> on their social media, and all the Australians are just like going, "Oh, isn't it cute?" Because like sitting right next to you is this giant huntsman on the wall, <laughs> <laughs> with it throwing its arms wide at you. Don't you come near me! Oh, jeez. <laughs> but a huntsman it can be terrifying because they're um they're also very fast, and they when yeah. they run along the when they oh run along no. the walls or run along the ceiling or along the floor, you can hear their little nails going. Tick, 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 oh my god! It's just like oh my god! They've got that's weight. Just yeah, nightmare. So when you you yeah. lay, reaching up there with that telescoping pole, if the thing decides to jump, then <gasps> oh! everybody who you know it doesn't it doesn't matter how tough you think you are, you're going to invent a dance right there. <laughs> 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 Oh, my gosh. Well, now we've had the stuff of nightmares. Shall we hear your dream? Mm. <laughs> my dream? Yeah. 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 Would you like to count us in? Okay. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go. All right. I've just woke up. Um, and I've, uh, I had a dream this morning that um, – I was walking back from my daily walk and as I was coming around the corner, I see this big tall guy, really tall fella, um, wearing pyjamas and he's outside my house and he's looking uh, at the windows and uh, looking at the whole house and then I see him lean down and pick up a rock 
and he throws it at my house. And then, um, I don't know if he knows anyone's home or not, but he kind of like looks around a bit, doesn't see me. But he uh, he walks uh, over and gets another rock and then lines up another part of the house and throws it at that part of the house and looks around again, no one's watching. He picks up a third rock and he throws it at the at the door of the house, the back door. And so I just pop out from around the corner and I run at him and I launch myself at him and he has another rock in his hand and he tries to throw it at me. And um, But I'm, I'm, I'm onto him. Um, I throw myself over and put my... Uh, like I'm basically throwing myself onto his back because he turns... He must turn around a bit or something. Um, and uh, so suddenly I'm on his back either way and uh, I'm trying to put him in that choke hold that um, <laughs> that you pass uh, that people pass out with. Um, so I'm, I've got my uh, my elbow wrapped around his throat and I'm pushing the back of his head down over my over my forearm <laughs> to, tr- to try and uh, um, to try and make him pass out. But anyway, um, and uh, and he's kind of struggling a bit and then <laughs> and then we're both on the ground and suddenly it's night time. And um, he still hasn't passed out. And then he just like, instead of struggling, he's just kind of like waiting. And I'm still kind of pushing down on his neck. And this is going on for ages and um, because it's night <laughs> it's nighttime. And, um, and then I hear him go, yeah. and he's a cat. And so I let him go, but he's still a, a big, tall man. Um, I th- and I just let him go because I felt sorry for him. And that was... Suddenly, um, we're talking in my house, and we're sitting. I'm sitting in a doorway for some reason. He's sitting on the um, on a couch in my room, which you know, looking at the room in my memory, uh, it doesn't look anything like my room. Um, there are uh, weapons all over the walls. They're my weapons. So they're and when I say weapons, they're all melee weapons. So they're all um, like knives and swords and bows and arrows and flails and, you know, um, but I don't have a room in my house with weapons all over the walls. And, um, and then I wish I did, but, um, then the, the guy is sitting there and he's a different guy. So he's a younger guy. He's, um, he doesn't look, he's not wearing pajamas. He's just wearing like normal shorts and stuff. And he's, um, and I'm not looking at him. I'm looking out the door. That I'm sitting in a doorway and I'm looking out up the hallway and I'm just talking to him as if on the phone because I'm not looking at him while I'm talking at him. Um, and I'm saying, like, why? I'm trying to talk to him. Like, why Why would you do this? Why are you throwing rocks at my house? And he said, look, I don't know. And I so I said, you. I'm trying to have this reasonable conversation, trying to get through to him, like, come on, we, we don't have to be like this. We can be good neighbours. And um, I guess I assumed he was a neighbour in, in the dream. Um, but then he uh, he starts kind of umming and eyeing and ifing and butting and not really answering anything. And I said, mate, you're hopeless. And he's got this assault rifle and he pulls it up and he pulls a, um, a bullet out of his pocket and he looks at me in the eye. He's got now, now I can see what he looks like. He's got a beard. Um, and uh, he's only about 24 or something, um, and and short cropped hair. And he looks looks me in the eye and he loads this bullet into the chamber. And I said, you're going to load a bullet in my house with a wall of my weapons uh, above you. And and then I launch myself. <laughs> I launch myself at him again and, and then I wake up. <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, that's. Um, I, I think I can kind of start to pick apart why I dream these kinds of things. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's my dream. And now I'm waking up laughing. Hilarious. Great. Okay, thank you. Bye. Oh my gosh. What a badass <laughs> oh in God. your dream. <laughs> <laughs> you were. Always launching myself at people. <laughs> You're loading a bullet surrounded by my weapons. Of my weapons. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. Oh my god. And like I said, I think I know why I have these kinds of dreams, but I, I'll wait for your um 
to, to see what you think okay. or what you, what you decide. Well, I've looked up in my highly scientific book that I bought for like two pounds at a charity shop. I looked up um, weapons and it says to dream of weapons usually suggests our desire to hurt someone or something. We have internalized oh our aggression and it is marginally more what? acceptable to dream of weapons and of using them against people than actually having to deal with such circumstances in everyday life. Mm. So has someone frustrated well, you and you're just dreaming about the weapons <laughs> instead of... Well, to be fair, to be fair, like to me, <laughs> I wasn't the one wielding the weapons. That's true. That's yeah, it was true. the other dude. I exactly. was defending myself. I was like, okay, I've got I to gotta stop this. I've got to stop what's about to happen and launch myself at people. Gee, you're being very <laughs> protective. Exactly. Does the book say anything about um, being attacked? It does. But... In also tradition of this book, <laughs> Freud. Uh oh. Freud takes a lot it's of uh, sexy. <laughs> so oh. it says, of course, the gun or pistol <laughs> traditionally represents male sexuality, and to dream of being shot often <laughs> indicates a wish for or fear of sexual aggression. <laughs> oh my gosh. From, from. <laughs> okay. I don't think that's the case, but the book will find, honestly, if ever you dream of a gun or a train <laughs> or. Sausages, like anything. <laughs> the book's like, oh, I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> I know what that is. Yeah. Oh, that one's easy. <laughs> I also looked up um, animals and uh, I looked up cat. And cat says, mm -hmm. the dream of cats is a link to the feline sensuous side of human beings. <laughs> so it's oh trying its best to <sighs> make this into something else. <laughs> Yes. What about a tall it dude is. in pyjamas throwing rocks at my oh, house? Oh, that, that's the sexiest of all dreams you can have. <laughs> oh, that's, so, that's super sexy. I think it does, have, it does have rock, but it says the dream of rock suggests stability in the real world. Um, seaside rock can mm. remind us of happier, more carefree times. <laughs> Airborne no. rock? Did they say anything about... Yeah. Mm, it doesn't say anything about throwing rocks. Right. Did you know this man? No. No, no, I life. had no idea. Uh, never seen him before. Never seen and, him. and the younger guy at the end of the dream, I don't know him either. But um, hmm. I'll tell you, it's a recurring th dream. The, the whole dream itself isn't recurring, but a recurring theme. And um, is there anything else you wanted to look up from that before I launch in, launch myself at this? <laughs> No, feel free. It's it's good to know like what sort of has been going on in your life that you think. Yeah. Might have made yeah. This so, um, especially since moving to this place, this is this is the first time I've owned a house, or I've, you know, I've got a mortgage, so I'm paying it off. But it's my, it's not someone else's house that I'm yeah. living in. Um, I have had a lot of dreams over the years of things happening to the borders like the fences being taken down or trees being cut down um, of, in my property. So I, I often dream that I hear a noise outside the window and I'll get up. And this is a, a one of those situations where you think you've woken up and you go about your day and then you wake up again. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so sometimes I'll wake up and thinking I'm hearing something in the front yard and I look out the windows and people are out there cutting down our trees or um, I'll wake up in the morning, go into the kitchen, look out the window, and the fence is missing. And and it's um, and I think it's you know some kind of it, I guess any psychologist would say, oh well, that's a very that's a kind of indication of insecurity. You feel like you feel like yeah, your borders are being um, intruded on, or your borders are being taken down, mm -hmm. or. You know, because I'm I'm a very private person, and I do like my um my borders, <laughs> <laughs> I like my walls up, I like my uh, doors closed when I go to sleep, kind of thing. But I'm not terrified of um, mm -hmm. home invasion or anything. But I often have these dreams of of um, intrusion on the borders. So I think maybe a dude throwing rocks at my house is one of those things where I've got to protect my um my home space yeah. yeah but is there anything in there about um uh fences or borders being 
breached or Ooh. kind of I don't know, invasion or something. There must be. Um, let me look up mm-hmm. fence. I did also look up wrestling, and there wasn't anything in the book about it. <laughs> <laughs> Chokeholds. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we look up wrestling every week. Honestly, the, the, the guy suddenly going. I have no idea. <laughs> I I can't even think why that would be the case, but I do occasionally just bust out a meow on you know now and then just for no reason. So maybe it's just a reflection of I guess like you know my the dream interpretation might be like if maybe there's a problem that you make bigger than it is, so you feel like you're wrestling a big dude when really it's just a little cat and it's fine. <laughs> Maybe it's a little cat. Mm. And all it needs is a chin yeah. scratch. Well, it, yeah. And if you yeah. feel threatened by by big dudes, you can just go <laughs> and everything will be okay. Just like get a, a laser pointer and point <laughs> yeah, it away it. and they just run. <laughs> <throwing off. laughs> um, I found fence. Yeah. It says... When we dream of fences, we are dreaming of social or class barriers or perhaps our own need for privacy. So you're right. We may be aware of boundaries and relationships which can prevent us from achieving the proper type of connection we need. We may have difficulty in expressing ourselves in some way. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it, it seems to, like, I can see that about myself that, you know, I'm a I'm a little fella. <laughs> so I I know I sound like a huge guy, but but I'm a little fella. And all through all my life, I've been, um, you know, it's one of those things that little little um, uh, like small people. I'm I'm not um, tiny tiny, but uh, I'm was the shortest of yeah. all my friends and the shortest in yeah. But um, and all through my school life, I was like trying to prove myself and trying to, um, you know an effort to be taken seriously constantly. So, you know, throwing myself into sports and things like martial arts and you know, wanting to be taken seriously. Um, and, you know, I kind of, I'm not really like that anymore, but that kind of, um, that kind of need for respect and need for, to be, um, to have your borders taken or respected yeah. or whatever, it seems like it's probably a remnant of, of those kinds of, thoughts i guess I also younger. the way it was like all melee weapons as well that is that like you know big getting up close getting uh, like yeah it is more proving yourself than something long range far away sort of thing it really is yeah although i did mention um yeah that i had bows and arrows up there and i said it was a melee weapon <laughs> so that was wrong i've got bows but and the, arrows to just club people the, with I got, I, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, exactly yeah um, but no, I do. I've had a fascination with melee weapons and hand-to-hand combat since I was a kid. And I think I remember one of my earliest memories of that I think triggered my fascination with, um, you know, rubber bands and bows and arrows and things that you can fire stuff around the room with. And mm. was uh, was the moment that my dad, uh, I must have been, it's such an early memory. I must have been like three or four years old. But my dad got a piece of paper and folded it around a rubber band and flung it across the room. And I remember the look on his face, which is really weird because he looked at me as if like, (laughs) did you see that? Like a real excited kind of look. And that was just like the most um, vivid memory in my head. And when I think about why am I fascinated with you know, things that can fling stuff and throw stuff and hit stuff. It's probably like way yeah. back then, those early memories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow, this this turns into a real deep psychological <laughs> analysis, doesn't it? It does, right? <laughs> I feel, like, I feel oh, kind no. of exposed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's yeah, our yeah, look rocks. Up, look up, uh, exposed. Away at the borders <laughs> of our little rocks. <laughs> Oh no, maybe that's why I had the dream because I know, yeah. Uh oh. It's like I've got to record a, I'm going to record a, 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 record a dream. I wonder what I'll dream about. And next thing, I'm having a dream about my borders being. We're the shattered. big man in pajamas. That's why you were so big. It was actually just Kirsty on my yeah. shoulders. <laughs> yeah. It's just us yeah. in a trench coat. So who who went? Uh, Kirsty has a cat. It's Mister Tabs. <laughs> I do have a cat, yeah. It's probably him. Yeah. He was at the top of the trench coat wearing a little hat. Yeah. (laughs) 
Yeah, I, I kind of wonder where the pajamas <laughs> thing came from too in the dream because that makes no sense to me. I wonder, oh, like I don't wear, you know, I don't wear pajamas and I, yeah, I don't, don't see people wearing pajamas around um, the neighborhood. <laughs> Although, hey, um, there are people who go to the supermarket in their pajamas <laughs> here. So if you really were worried about like recording a dream and maybe like, delving into it a little bit maybe the pajamas sort of reflects that it's like oh i'm sleeping mm. and my subconscious is going to reveal <laughs> something about me or something like that you know maybe i don't know i, I don't think i've i haven't felt nervous or awkward about this at all so it's not something that i don't i don't think it would have weighed on me that much i actually mm -hmm. jeanette my partner she was away at the time she was um staying with her mother for the weekend um visiting and so um, just so happened that uh, when I had the dream, um, I was alone in the house and maybe I had this this kind of subconscious, uh, I don't know, wariness or just awareness that I, w when you're alone in the house, you're always listening, aren't you? Yeah. You're always hearing. Yeah. And if it's, if it's a kind yeah. of like, if it's an empty house or a quiet neighborhood or or whatever, even if it's not, I suppose. But if you hear a noise, you you wake up or you want to know what it is. Yeah, you go and investigate. Just or if you don't investigate, edge. you just hide under the bed. But. <laughs> it's like when whenever Alex is away, I have to like, when I go upstairs, I have to call him to just be like, okay, I'm just checking all the rooms. I've gone into the bedroom. <laughs> right. Still not murdered. Yep. In the bathroom now. No murderers yeah. here. And I'm like, I don't know what he can do if... if if I were attacked, it'd just have to be like, okay. If you just went, there is a murderer here for a change. <laughs> what would happen? <laughs> what are we going to do? Can you pop home again, please? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. the same. Like any noise just spooks me so much. The, the worst thing is if you've watched something creepy mm -hmm. or scary and then you've got to, like, if you're alone in the house and then you've got to go turn all the lights off before you go to bed. So <laughs> yeah, you've got to, you just got to like go from one room. to bed, like, oh, yeah. I'll be and, and as you And as you're going through the house, it's getting darker and darker behind you. So it's just like yeah. you're diminishing into the last lit part of the house until finally you turn that one off. Just your walk gets quicker and quicker as you go through the house. <laughs> 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 yeah, and and your neck gets shorter and yeah. shorter and shorter. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> we have like a fancy thing now where um, we can ask uh, Alexa to turn off the lights so I can get into bed and just be like, turn off the light. And she'll be like, okay. <laughs> but then I worry oh, that wow. the, um, murderers and, and thugs and burglars can hear me say it and they know. So it's a double edged sword. <laughs> 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 They'll step out of the wardrobe and say, Alexa, turn on the light. <laughs> oh, no. Or someone says, yeah, Alexa, <laughs> turn off the light. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, oh, well, no. then again, new sometimes fear. I, yeah, new fear or not, yeah. <laughs> there was one time with um, Alexa out of like, absolutely nowhere. I was just in the kitchen and um, she genuinely, she just went, no. I will not hurt you. And I was like, uh, um, uh, oh, what? okay, what? thank you for that. What? <laughs> oh I don't my know gosh. what she thought I said. That is creepy I was, as hell. It wasn't comforting at all. It was quite the opposite. Oh man. <laughs> that's amazing. That's really cool and creepy. <laughs> and like, that sounds like a start of a horror movie. It does. Or, or, yeah, that's great. Do you have a plan? Um, do you have a plan in your head or a planned exit route if something uh, were to happen? Do you have this like um, dark fantasy in your head that, that you'll get someone busting through the door or trying to get through the window and do you know where you're going to go or how you're going to – do you have an escape room or a panic room? <laughs> I I have a balcony so I'd probably just throw myself off the bat. <laughs> That's a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> Into a pool, one I hope, floor off. I'll or be a fine. bush. All oh, right, right. <laughs> I, we, see, the problem is upstairs, Plop. we only have one window that fully opens. The others are those, like, only the little bit at the top opens. So that is the one exit I could have if I was upstairs oh. would be that room. So I always just think. I, and they'd come, they'd, they'd find you wedged in there trying to get out. <laughs> 
like halfway up. Oh my gosh, <laughs> like that woman in Bristol who, oh, you might, <laughs> I don't know how far this news traveled, but there was a woman in the, the city I live in where she was on a date and they went back to his place and she <laughs> she had to do a, a massive poo and she was so embarrassed about this <laughs> that she tried to throw it out the window but it was one of those in no. the UK we have these windows that are like because we need to keep a lot of the warmth in it, they'd be like double windows and it fell down between the Ooh. windows <gasps> So oh, she tried no. to get it out and she got stuck and the fireman had to come round and rescue her. <laughs> had she cleaned herself up before doing yeah. all this? Yeah, thankfully. That's the one thing. Because imagine grace. if not, right? <laughs> but at the end of this news she was article, clothed. the guy was like, oh, yeah, no, I'd probably see her again, to be fair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that that is how the, uh, the wow. burglar would find me <laughs> stuck in a window. <laughs> <laughs> Words yeah. trying to get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted a poo. <laughs> yeah, there was that. Um, remember there was it the IT crowd where the Richard Ayoade character, Mom, you're making oh, her go back yeah. in. <laughs> She's like, "What are you doing in there, Mom? You're making her go back in." <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. I like to think I'd put up a bit of a fight if uh, somebody tried to get in. I'd like grab something and start threatening them. I guess you hope that something <laughs> kicks in. Because at the moment I feel like if someone yeah. fought me, I'd just roll on my belly and just go, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you're the boss now. <laughs> I think, I always think that... Take the money. <laughs> if someone did break in, my go-to thing is that I would just be like, I'll protect the bunnies and anything else mm. they want to take absolutely fine but i think i would get that you know when you, you mm. hear about like mothers who can lift cars if their children are threatened i think i'd become yep. like that with the bunnies you'd, i'd you'd be like lift all the bunnies i'd just pick them up run out and the house <laughs> would explode behind me and i'd be like <laughs> <laughs> and the bunnies would be like what are you doing <laughs> there's no one there <laughs> i heard a noise it's like when um, <laughs> Alex had to go away for like a week and I became so determined that there was someone living in our attic. But I'm scared of the attic, so I couldn't go up to check. So every night I'd just be there like, you better not be up there because <laughs> I'll be quite annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a, um, we, I've got a, uh, there's a small window on the side of the house. I'm not going to tell you exactly where it is just because I don't want to give it away. But there is, there's an exit where I, you know, Jeanette and I have decided like, right, if someone tries to bust in the front door, we just hide in this little room where that little window is and then open the window, but then go back inside and hide. So when oh. they find the window open, ah. they will be like, they got away. And they'll jump outside and run and uh, try to find us in the neighborhood uh, where the police will be waiting. Smart. <laughs> Double black. <laughs> yes. So you figure it all out when you're alone at home, thinking about <laughs> home invasion and <laughs> yeah. people throwing rocks at your house. <laughs> I know what I'll do. <laughs> I think when I was little, the things that scared me were like the ridiculous things that could never actually happen. And people would be like, wouldn't you be more scared of like a home invasion or something? And I'm like, no, because if a, if like a fella walks in, I sort of know how I would fight a fella. Whereas if like... A swarm of magical bees comes in. What do I do then? That's the sort of thing I need to be preparing for. Exactly. I need to know. What do you do? I can't swing a chair at a ghost. <laughs> yeah. But I can swing a chair at a man. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've got, um, I've got so many plans of things that never happened that, and will never happen. So many, so many plans to fight against things that will never happen. <laughs> All t and that's why I, that's, that's why I, I forget some things that are important because my head's full of crap that isn't. <laughs> yeah. Like I can't do my times tables, but, you know, if I ever meet a shark, I'll know what to do. Because <laughs> <laughs> you've, you, you've gone over the situation in your head so many times. Yeah. Over the shark fight. Yeah. 
<laughs> exactly. It's good to be prepared. <laughs> Man, I love, I've been getting right into math stuff and programming stuff and things that I never would have been able to do when I was younger because I was so busy, like, fantasy fighting in my brain. (laughs) 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 It's like, I really really wish I'd, you know, spent more time on the cool technical stuff at school so I could have, I don't know, if if I'd done any of that, I wouldn't be animating these days for sure. Yeah, I saw a meme earlier that was like, me when I was at school, why do I have to learn all this stuff that I'm never going to use, me as an adult, now to listen to an hour podcast on the mating habits of dolphins? (laughs) 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 Oh, They don't teach that in school. Yeah, (laughs) they don't. And the stuff that you can learn. Yeah, like when you want to learn, it's so much better than when, like I can never, if someone's trying to teach me something, I even get it when I do the tutorials in games. I'm like, oh, why are you trying to teach me things? And I will skip Mm. through everything and then be like, I don't know how to play this. (laughs) Whereas when I want to learn, it's so much better. You get hungry for it. Did you hear? I found that with uni. Sorry, you No, no, I was just going to, no, go ahead. Um, Mine's a random silly thought. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, I was just gonna say like I found it with uni like I I didn't go to university straight away uh because I wanted to do art but I thought I don't really want to do it in a learning environment I just kind of want to do it freeform so I waited and I went to uni at like 23 and because I wanted to learn I just found that I enjoyed it yeah. so much more mm. you know yeah that yeah. um <clears throat> speaking of games and skipping tutorials did you hear that steam is introducing a um a note-taking thing so you can take notes in games i think that's in oh really yeah so i think it's in steam and i don't know if it's um i don't know if it's definite yet but yeah i just saw that the other day and i was thinking man why has nobody ever done that before i've I've, you know if i have to remember something in a game i have to get a piece of paper or tab out to a notepad or something exactly that's such a good idea like the amount of times i'm playing a game and I'll have the map open and I'm like, I just want to be able to draw on it. I just want to doodle all over this thing just yeah. so I remember things. And <laughs> Yeah, and annotate the like map the and stuff thing. would be great just to exactly. write your own notes and stuff. But I use a – or do, do you guys use a stylus at all or for yeah. a computer? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, playing games and writing notes would be easier with a stylus, but it would, it would suck with a mouse. Yeah. Although, you know, just, just yeah, typing sure. it is fine. Yes. But I want to draw little arrows and explosions. Exactly. I, I usually just like print screen and take it to paint or something and doodle all over <laughs> right. it. <laughs> like the yeah. biggest like life hack mm. I ever I ever did is um, pinning the snip tool to my taskbar so it's right there all the time, so I don't have to remember how to open it. Because <laughs> I do, do that. You, I, like, oh, so because you. Like snip you a tiny bit of the game and the... just have it on the other monitor, so I don't have to try and remember. <laughs> right. So you don't. Um, That's a good idea. Use the keyboard shortcut at all? No, because I kept forgetting what it was. So it's now I just. And have that's it why right you did there. pin it to the taskbar. Yeah. Right. That's my problem too. I know it exists, but I don't remember the shortcut. So I'm like, I'll just print screen it, take it to paint, and prop it <laughs> yeah. every time. <laughs> <laughs> But then you got to tab out of the game to do that, or you got to like yeah. the game loses focus, and then you it goes the screen goes black, and everyone leaves your stream, and <laughs> yeah, the game crashes because you've tabbed out. Yeah, so, yeah. oh no, uh, tabbing out is asking for trouble. But no, the um, it is I because I, I love keyboard shortcuts so much. I've got um all the Windows keyboard shortcuts and all these like really cool uh, little functions burned into my brain. Um, with the Windows key, man, they they change your life once you know what they are. Yeah. But yeah, just that Win Win Shift S is the Windows one. But I don't. I think it doesn't work on some keyboards. And also, what's the other one? Alt One Five. I think Alt One Five. If you've got the character map enabled, is a is a musical note. I think. Ooh. No, that's not. It's Alt ah. Alt One Four, and uh, and also Alt One Three. So if you hold down. Alt and type one four on the numpad. I think that's um, did it happen? Yes. Oh Ooh. yeah. 
I seem to remember doing that in like video games when I was a kid. Right. I was like, right, alt something something does this. And I would send like cool messages, but I just completely forgot all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But all, all the alt, um, the single digits are also cool. They got the, the four suits of the, the, um, you know, card deck, like clubs and diamonds and all those. That, that's just alt three, four, five, and six, I think. But anyway. Oh my God. Ah. Yeah. Keyboard shortcuts, man. They're the best. <laughs> Keyboard shortcuts. I would have to write them all down on post-its and have them around my monitor. so I would have to I have them. them all written down in a notepad, <laughs> but <laughs> in a, in a uh, yeah, text document. So, um, But then you use them one for a few a few times in a row and you'll never forget it, like the screen, screenshot one. Yeah. Snipping tool. Snipping tool's great. It really is. I'm gonna to have to start using it. <laughs> well, when you did you say it was Win Shift S? Yeah, Win Shift S, and um, and then when it takes a screenshot and <gasps> puts a little pop up in the corner of your screen, you can click on it and then draw on, draw on the. Uh, wow, thing. this is gonna change my life. <laughs> and then you can just close it uh, once you've drawn on it. You don't have to save it or anything. You just close it and you can paste it directly into a chat. Yeah, because it saves your annotation to the clipboard. That's so cool, isn't it? The learning podcast. Oh my god! This yes, is a learning it's gone podcast. from um, exposing my darkest fears to uh, te- teaching keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> Windows power tools. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Well, you've been chatting for an mm. hour, blimey! Oh, we have. Um, Doesn't feel like. Where it. can people find you? Not in the physical realm. But yeah, don't the, come to my physical. Internet. Don't breach my borders. Unless you're a, a possum. Don't yeah, unless a you're a possum and your, your name's Mabel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I am on uh, Twitch and no one can spell my name, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I was thinking I should, maybe I should change my name, my Twitch name, but then I would just lose so much momentum, not really... Not that I've really got a lot of momentum, but it's been a long, slow burn to to build the community around this ridiculous spelled name. But um, yeah. yeah, it's it's um, C H L U A I D, and it's pr- pronounced Schlulluade. No, it's pronounced Clyde. Schlulluade. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much everybody who sees it without knowing how it's pronounced, unless they're Scottish and they know a little bit of Gaelic. Um, they'll just say Chloeid, <laughs> but it's Clyde. Well, do you know, the first time I ever read it, I somehow completely misread it, and I thought it was at first um, Cthulhu, like a mixture between Kool Aid and Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Yeah, it's, but uh, that, you think that's, um, you might be the only person who's pronounced it that way, but a lot of people. Do or have thought it was Cthulhu, <laughs> something to do with Cthulhu or yeah. Kool Aid, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's on Twitch. Um, that's my name on Twitch. It's my name on Twitter. It's my name on Instagram. It's my name everywhere. So I'm sorry if you can't find it, but good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you working on at the moment? Well, right now I have. Um, I'm in the weeds of the 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 end of a movie that I've been making for four years. Um, and when I say movie, it's, um, it's what Ooh. I've always called internet shorts, <laughs> but it's a, um, it's a pilot episode I've decided or decided long ago, but it's 21 minutes long and I'm at 19 minutes complete. So Ooh. getting close, Ooh. but like I said, really deep in the weeds of trying to figure out how to, how to do this particular effect of the, the, the UU creatures, which we talked about earlier, those are the shadow swarm. Um, I have quite a bit of effects experience. In fact, my entire career has been in effects animation. Um, and I'm really tr- trying to nail the look of these um, these shadow creatures. And it's, um, it's yeah, mm-hmm. it's like pulling teeth, trying to come up with something that's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, my, I, I, want to fall back on hand drawing them which I've always done but if I hand draw them it's going to take me another four years because there's so much of it to do and so I'm trying to come up with a kind of 
CG or a, a more efficient, um, maybe AI will save me. Hurry up, AI. <laughs> Hurry up and <laughs> save my save my time. Yeah, so that's what I'm working on right now, and it's I'm doing it all live on on my Twitch channel. But um, I'm not sure if I need to finish the pilot in order to pitch a series because that's the the big thing that's going on in the background that isn't being streamed, and I don't get an opportunity to talk about much yet, but. Um, I'm teamed up with a producer friend of mine who we we started at Disney way back in the in the early '90s. Uh, we started at Disney together. We started about six oh, wow. months apart, and so we've been good friends all those years. And back in about the mid 2000s or 2006 or something, uh, we started working together because we decided we were going to make a Brackenwood movie together. And he is. Um, an incredibly kind of focused story guy. So he knows um, storytelling structure and what works and what is important in telling a story. Whereas me, I'll just show a bunch of events happening on screen and do some silly like toilet jokes and, and that's the movie and roll credits. But he wants to structure it into something that people can um, be entertained by and have a satisfying kind of like conclusion and character yeah. growth and like world arc and, you know, big picture stuff, <laughs> which, you know, it blows my mind that he's so, um, he, his brain works the way it does. But yeah, I'm teamed up with him. He, he's been working in the States since, well, for the last probably 15 years, I think. Um, but we've been doing regular calls for the last year, certainly since starting on this project, um, a, at least a year. Uh, but before that, we hadn't spoken for a long time. Um, but uh, yeah, we're back into it now and we're writing a series that we intend to pitch. So we're going to pitch Brackenwood as Hell a yeah. three season series. Oh, wow. At, um, oh, that's yeah. really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to try to get Fat Sack on the big screen. I was just thinking, I was like, I've managed to make it this far without mentioning Fat Sack. <laughs> <laughs> but if anyone wants like a little a little taste of the world, I recommend the uh, Brackenwood Wildlife documentary Fat Sack mm, um, yes. episode. <laughs> I love him yeah, so much. Yeah, I, 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 I was um, just started doing those episodes. I only got two done before I decided I was going to make a pilot for a series. And so if I if the pilot idea and the series idea fails, I've always said my plan B is to just make the whole documentary series and have um, all the creatures of Brackenwood with their own episode. But I've, I'm feeling pretty good about where the, the series is headed because we've mm -hmm. put in so much work and the, the story knowledge that this guy, Ryan, this friend of mine, um, he's bringing to Brackenwood is, is pushing me to expand the universe in ways that I didn't think I ever would yeah. or I never really considered. So I've gone and done a whole like creation myth kind of thing and um, arcs of the, the history going way back long, 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 long time before Bitey and Lemony and Fatsack and mm -hmm. mm, all the series That's as it is now. Super cool. That's really exciting. Yeah. Oh, I hope it all goes well. Yeah. I hope it all. Um... Yeah. Or the the serious business side of it all works out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a scary prospect, really. The the business side and the you know how much of your story, like if somebody else funds your story, they're going to want some input. They're going to want some ownership. And really, if somebody gives you a bunch of money and doesn't want to manipulate or change or they don't want that kind of level of ownership. That's just called an angel investment <laughs> where someone throws yeah. money at you and says, do whatever you want. But, um, yeah, otherwise the chances that someone's going to want to change stuff because they're the ones with the money is is real and I'm prepared for it, but I guess we'll see um, yeah, um, you know, how much yeah. uh, I'm willing to give away or I <laughs> how want much I'm willing to compromise. drinking a Coca-Cola on, <laughs> yeah, on a motorbike. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Someone actually asked cool. me to draw Fat Sack on a motorbike and I did on the Aww. stream. <laughs> Amazing. 
<laughs> yeah, it was like I was doing a fat sack. Um, it was called Fat Sack Friday. Yeah. We're doing that. Oh, you used to drop in from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Fat Sack Fridays. And we we're always painting fat sacks in these different uh, um, different situations and, you know, Halloween fat sacks and motorbike fat sacks and cigarette smoking fat sacks and tattooed punks fat sacks. I got a bunny, bunny ear Some fat sack. Oh, that's right, you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> From uh, Hanson Paints, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, requested it for you because I remember drawing that and then writing the, the two names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, adorable. I want them to be real. <laughs> yeah, me too. You know, I um, I don't know how much time we got left, but, you know, I um, tried to get Fat Sack merchandise. Oh. Uh, done and I saw a um I had this idea for a squishy gel filled vinyl toy yeah. that was Ooh. um it was a fat sack and that would have been so good and I took it to this I took I uh, rang up this company in Sydney and they had worked on the Lord of the Rings movies and they got all this like um this great kind of like uh I don't know pedigree of creators and craftsmen working there um and I asked them for a quote on how to do this uh, this vinyl toy, and they said, "Oh, it'll be about five thousand dollars to make the prototype." Is and um, oh, damn. what's that in pound? That's about um, I think two and a half now, but back then it was about a thousand pounds. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but uh, I said, "Oh, well, I'll I'll wait. Um, I, I'll call you back in a couple of months. I'll." get the money together because I really wanted to do this. And the, the idea was to make a prototype and then um, have it and like get some factory or whatever to tool up and make the toys in some factory wherever they do that. Um, and I hadn't gone too far into down that route at all as far as research. But uh, I got back to them in a couple of months and I said, oh, I've got the money. And um the guy said, okay, so, yeah, as agreed, it'll be about $10,000. And I went, no. What? <laughs> so I kind of just like dropped the idea a bit and I thought, well, making that toy, it's the very, it's the best Brackenwood merchandise and I, I want it. I want that toy so bad. Yeah. Um, this gel-filled fat sack that you can like throw around and throw against the walls and kick it and <laughs> be biting. <laughs> or you can just sit there and squeeze That'll it. That'll be me. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's squeezing. <laughs> yeah, but also I had an idea of making hot water bottles that were oh, fat sack. Yes. So you could fill it with hot water and it would be oh, make a sloshy so noise, yeah. And you squeeze its head and it goes, <laughs> you know, those kinds of little. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That'd be so, so good to have the money to make some of those prototypes, but yeah, maybe I have to wait till. The uh, the series gets huge and is a ha- fat sack is a household name. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Then there'll be merch everywhere. We'll be able to move yeah. for fat sacks. <laughs> <laughs> Water filled and gel filled and kickable ones and huggable huggable ones and wearable ones. <laughs> oh, fat sack onesie! Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, inflatable onesies. Yeah. They can. Oh my god blow it up and bounce off the walls (laughs) (laughs) well on that wonderful imagery (laughs) thank you so much for coming and talking to us yeah thank you so much it's been so interesting thank you both so so much for even considering me and my silly dream we didn't invade your borders too much (laughs) yeah hope we didn't throw too many rocks at you i'll get it i'll get over it yeah i'll probably have some more (laughs) some more dreams tonight but there'll be uh, probably more fat sacks Nice. This time. <laughs> oh, good. In the next stream, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Kirsty, for chatting cool. as always. And thank you, Adam, so, so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bryony. And thank you, Adam. Thank you both so very much. Nice to meet you, Kirsty, as well. Yes, lovely to meet you too. Thank you so much. Uh, it has been It's lovely. been fun. And yeah, until next time, bye bye for now, everyone. Bye bye for now. Bye bye. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 B